it was the spring of 1999 and i started dating a beautiful black brilliant quintessential queen by the name of wakia nicole champion who everybody called nikki we met at a black history program where i was the speaker and she was the soloist and we clicked immediately because we were both educators and i was preparing to step out on faith as a full-time professional speaker a couple of months later in the summer of 1999 i was elated and excited but a little nervous at the same time because you see i was about to meet nikki's son a three-year-old promising prince by the name of Keon. And as the day drew nearer, I became more excited and more nervous at the same time. And when the day arrived, I drove up to Nikki's home and I got out of my car and my pace slowed as I walked towards the house, rang the doorbell, and she opened the door and she let me in and I stepped inside of her home and out of nowhere, this three-year-old beautiful promising prince ran up to me, looked me in the eye and said, why are you here? I was speechless. I didn't know what to say in that moment because never, in a million years would I have imagined that question would come from a three-year-old. So I went to the couch, I sat down and I beckoned him to come to me and he did. I picked him up and I sat him on my lap and I said, I'm here to meet you. What is your name? And he said, Keon. And then he hugged me and the weight of the world was off of my shoulders as I hugged him back. And I knew in that moment, it was a divine moment. I knew in that moment that he had accepted me and it was a divine moment, not only because he accepted me, but because I was 30 and he was three and numbers meant something. And both of those numbers are divine in my Christian walk. And so over the course of the next couple of years, I had the privilege and the honor of taking Keon to his first day of pre-K. I had the honor and the privilege of going to PTA meetings. I was intentional about being that dad that showed up at the PTA meetings and all of the programs that Keon was in. I had the honor of going to the first day of school when he was in kindergarten. I was excited about it. I had the honor of buying his school clothes when he was a little boy. I had the honor of being there, not as his father by sperm, but I was his father by spirit because I knew that my spirit was greater than my sperm. Yes, I wasn't there when Keon took his first steps but I was there every step of the way as he traveled his educational journey throughout K-12. I mean, when he was in elementary school, I would take he and his friends on a carpool and I would drive them to school. And before Keon got out of the car, I would say, I love you. And he would say, I love you more. And I would say, no, I love you more. And he would say, I love you till the new earth comes. Man. How do you beat that? How can you even deal with that? So that was the end of the conversation. And as Keon got older, I would take him when he was in high school along with his friends and I would teach them these affirmations like, I love myself, I believe in myself, I'm proud of myself, I'm a genius, I love myself, I believe in myself, I'm proud of myself, I'm a genius. And they would say those affirmations and then they would get out of the car and Keon would always get out of the car last in high school and I would say, I love you, son. And Keon would say, deuces. <laughs> you see, 
it wasn't cool for him to say, I love you at that point. Yes, he would get out of the car after saying peace, not knowing that on the inside, I didn't have peace. For you see, I felt inadequate as a man. I felt inadequate as a man because my lovely wife and I, my lovely wife and I had lost two children, two babies. I felt inadequate because my two fathers that I grew up with in a blended family, two mothers, two fathers, brothers and sisters on both sides. See, I grew up with my, my bonus dad who showed me love, but I couldn't fully accept his love because I was still longing, longing for the love from my biological father. Yes, yes. I decided that I would be Keon's father, his F-A-T-H-E-R, not his F-A-R-T-H-E-R. See, you got to understand that in 1999, I pledged my love to be his father. In 2002, Nikki and I were married. And on that day, I made a covenant. I made a covenant, not just with my wife. I made a covenant with God and my wife and Keon to love him and to protect and nurture him to be his father. And so I did that in elementary school. I did it in middle school. I did it in high school, but I still did not have that inner peace. And because of that, I ended up on a couch. No, not a couch at home. I ended up on the couch of my therapist. Yes, I was going through bouts of being oppressed, repressed, suppressed and depressed. And yes, even though I made peace with both of my fathers, because you see my biological father, we made peace. And when I saw him, I remember he used to kiss me on the cheek. My other dad, my bonus dad would always ask if he could check my homework. And he would always say, did you do your homework? See, they loved me, but I had issues with both of them. But I came to grips with that. And I love both of them on this day, but I still felt inadequate. I still felt inadequate as a man. And it's ironic that my beautiful son would end up on the same couch with the same therapist because in his adolescent years, he felt inadequate. During his adolescent years, at some point, he went through a bout of depression. And yes, there were those family members who said, child, he don't need no therapist. All y'all need to do is have faith and pray about it. Oh, yes, we prayed about it. Yes, we meditated as a family. Yes, we had faith. But I understood that faith without works is dead. As that father, I knew that I had to be the one to ascertain and embrace the fact that black mental health matters. I couldn't listen to all the family members. I couldn't listen to all the family members who said he didn't need therapy. No, I wasn't going to listen to all that tradition. I was going to give my son what my son needed to go, to glow and to grow. And he did. And so years later, years later, I would ask my son and we would reminisce. We would reminisce and we would reflect. We would reflect as we sat on the couch at home, we would reflect about how every three months when he was growing up, I would say, what type of father have I been? And sometimes I liked the answer and sometimes I didn't like the answer, but each and every day I worked to be a better father. I worked to improve in the sight of my son. See, there were times when we sat on that couch and we we cried together and we 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 leaned on each other's shoulder and we hugged each other. But then there were other times when we battled. We battled over who was better, the New York Giants or the Chicago Bears. See, I'm a Giants fan. And I used to tell Keon, man, how can you like the Chicago Bears? They ain't won a championship since 1985. The Giants won a championship. The only team in the NFL history that won a championship in four different decades. See, I would be him in two hand spades. You see, I would love on my son and he would love on me. And today, today, my son is a director of policy and community engagement in the Georgia Senate. Today, my son is a program coordinator for the National Lighthouse Foundation. Today, my son helps to coordinate the initiatives for our national program, Fathers Not Father. 
Today, my son has become like a mentor to me. Today, my son is over any bout of depression. And as a family, we are building and we are working together. You see, my son now travels around the country and around the world on tour with me. And it's such a blessing because now my son can get to see why I am here. He can get to see why I was not home all of those years while he was growing up. I would be on the road making a better life for my wife and my son. And now my son understands. You see, when I think about my son's question back in the summer of 1999, when he said, why are you here? I know without a shadow of a doubt, I am here to protect my son. I am here to reflect my son. I am here to respect my son. And I'm here never to ne neglect my son. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm.